press conference with Commissioner Vestager, soon to be Executive BP designate of the new Commission. Hello, welcome to this uh, now very photographed event. For the first time ever, I, I forgot my phone, but you would have made a wonderful picture. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, it's my third uh, web summit. Uh, I've been looking very much forward uh, to come here. Uh, even more happy to be here and, of course, looking forward uh, to speak uh, or to be in, in a conversation on stage uh, later this afternoon. Since uh, time is short and, uh, and limited, instead uh, of telling you what I think you ought to hear, uh, better me ask, uh, try to answer your questions because that may be what you want to hear. Uh, so uh, take it away. Sure. Okay. Hi, Elizabeth Schulze from CNBC. Can you give us an update on your ongoing investigations into the big tech companies, specifically your formal investigation into Amazon, the Apple EU, com the Apple Spotify complaint, and any questioning of Facebook regarding Libra? Thank you. How long do you have? <laughs> Uh, no, it is uh, absolutely correct to say that we have quite a number of investigations. Uh, we are on the Spotify complaint. We're in the process of analyzing the Apple response uh, to that complaint. Uh, on the uh, Facebook um, marketplace uh, request for information, we're in the process of receiving uh, information. It's quite a substantial set of questions that we've been asking uh, about the marketplace and how that uh, works. Um, on the Libra, uh, this is kind of special because the Libra doesn't exist yet. Uh, and uh, we do have the powers to look into things that are still in the making. Uh, but this is an all commission uh, actually endeavor. Uh, we look, it from, look into it from a competition point of view. Uh, colleagues of mine, they look into it from a financial stability uh, point of view, from a point of view concerning uh, money laundering, fraud, terrorist financing, you know, all the things you don't really want to know about. So it's a lot of colleagues, and we coordinate internally uh, in order to be able to have a full view, but also in order to be able to answer questions from member states uh, who have uh, quite deep concerns about what would be the effect of, uh, of Libra uh, if ever uh, launched. Hi, and Natalia Josiak from Bloomberg. I had a question about Google and Fitbit because they announced a deal earlier this week. Um, can, and you've mentioned in the past that you have concerns about large tech companies acquiring, acquiring smaller players for data uh, concerns. So would the commission be concerned about uh, a powerful company gaining sensitive health data uh, and to combine that with pro uh, profiles that they have on users? Well, I cannot ask that in, in specifically uh, in detail because it's not something that we have looked into uh, on, on this Google thing in itself. But in general, yes, we have a concern if companies merge because of data. Uh, and then we look into uh, these questions as a question of does this create a barrier to entry? Will this make it more difficult to innovate? Uh, and, of course, with colleagues, also see if there is a risk of uh, privacy issues arising uh, from that kind of data coming together. Uh, hi, Fu Yunqi from Reuters. Uh, you, um, you are looking into Apple Pay, and previously you had mentioned uh, there was no interest because it's not a dominant market player. Have you changed your mind on that? Is, do you see Apple Pay now as a dominant market player, and that's why it merits regulatory scrutiny? Thank you. Well, it very much depends on uh, the marketing question. And since markets also, when it comes to payments, are developing, and also uh, the market and how you, uh, as a consumer, see yourself depending or not depending on the ecosystem of your provider, uh, we have a second look uh, at the question of what market we're dealing with. And we've been asking quite a number of questions because we get many, many concerns uh, when it comes to uh, Apple Pay. Uh, for pure uh, competition reasons, that people see that it becomes increasingly difficult uh, to compete in the market for uh, EC payments. Uh, 
uh, Adrian Weckler from the Irish Independent. Do you hope to see a, U- a new unified tax system for tech companies across Europe? And are you satisfied that Ireland has done enough to reform its tax laws? Well, yes, uh, on, your, on your first question. Uh, I would very much like to see a not only a European but a global agreement uh, it has been usually there's no reason to be optimistic uh, when it's about taxes uh, because it's very often very slow and it's very difficult to get you know uh, a thorough uh, enforcement but when it comes to digital uh, taxation uh, developments has been fast and been quite ambitious uh, on the level of the OECD uh, you saw that we weren't successful in passing digital taxation for all of Europe. Uh, then the OECD took over and they have pushed uh, very fast and very ambitiously. Right now they have a public consultation on what they call the Pillar 1 and Pillar 2 approach. It is met with, I'd say, for taxes, quite enthusiasm, uh, also uh, outside of Europe. And uh, obviously I hope that they, that will give su- sufficient support for them to put the two approaches into detail so that we can have a, an OECD agreement uh, maybe sometime next year. If not, uh, us in the, from the Commission side, we will resume our work uh, to try to enable a European-wide uh, taxation also of digital companies because it doesn't make any sense that most companies pay their taxes, but some companies, depending on their technology and the business model, that they don't. So we very much hope that this sort of very fast momentum, that it can be kept and that we'll have results. Uh, on the question of, uh, of the Irish uh, tax system, uh, we've had a very good cooperation with uh, Irish authorities uh, over the last couple of years, and there has been important changes uh, in the Irish uh, tax legislation. Uh, Jordan Wilden from Deutsche Welle. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, your extended portfolio covering digital policy actually means you'll be in charge of the internal market, and if yes, if you'll have a significantly different approach to how you classify things like Airbnb and Uber, and whether that will see the move from tech companies to service providers. Well, this is one of the things that we will be discussing uh, intensively. Uh, because we will be trying to figure out this question about safety and liability when it comes to what we today see as platforms, but which is increasingly competitors to more traditional businesses, only they have a very different approach as to how to do their business and how to provide the different services. Uh, For me personally, it was kind of surprising that you have to go to court to see Uber as a transport company, Um, And I think we'll try to push that more and more so that you basically take uh, the whale off to see what is actually the business that we are dealing with here in order to have a level playing field. Because I think people should be more than welcome to do business in Europe and to do a successful business in Europe. Competition is a great thing, but it should be on a level playing field. Uh, And this is one of the discussions that we will be pushing uh, in the coming years and, of course, if need be, also in uh, in the cooperation with colleagues with the specific responsibility for single market, uh, digital, um, um, different kind of of taxation and, uh, and, and consumer protection, that we push legislation if that is needed. Hi, here in the back. Thomas Cabral from Agence France Presse. Uh, Google has, of course, paid fines, but uh, some argue that the market remedies don't go nearly far enough. Uh, Would you be ready to file new objections on Google Shopping or Android to fix that? Well, the fine is not uh, not the only point in in any of our decisions. Uh, The fine is there in order to, uh, yes, uh, in order to punish uh, past behavior. Uh, the cease and desist in, in order to stop illegal behavior, and then the framework of the decision is what should change your behavior for the future. Uh, this is why we're still monitoring uh, the Google behavior when it comes to Google Shopping, uh, because we may see that there is a show of rivals in the shopping box. Uh, we may see that there is a pickup when it comes to clicks for merchants, 
but we still do not see uh, much traffic for rival competitors when it comes to shopping comparison. So obviously we will uh, keep looking at this case. In the uh, Android case, um, here you also have a fine. Uh, Google have untied uh, the contracts, so you don't have to uh, take uh, Search and, uh, and Chrome um, we, if you take the Android operating system. Uh, so that is the fine for the past behavior that stop the illegal behavior. Then for the future, more needs to be done. Uh, previously, uh, way before my time, there's been positive experiences with choice screens. Uh, now a choice screen will be launched. There has been a lot of back and forth, uh, depending on a very constructive, uh, good and strong market response to the first ideas. Uh, so now Google will launch a, a choice screen where uh, competitors can be chosen and also be chosen as the default uh, when you have done that uh, with prices uh, that are much uh, more affordable than in the first version uh, of the choice screen. Uh, it remains to be seen how this will work, but we will follow this very, very closely. Uh, and that, of course, comes from uh, the disappointment of the Google AdSense case. Uh, you know, the case where Google um, had, you know, extreme exclusivity in placing ads on third-party websites if there was a search uh, engine. And here Google stopped their illegal behavior when we sent the statement of objection. Two years later, when we adopted the decision uh, and handed out a fine, the market hadn't uh, picked up at all. Uh, and these three very different uh, follow-ups after a decision is some of the things that has taught us that we may have to be much more uh, into market repair or market restoration, because in markets that are driven uh, by platforms and extremes economies to scale, once you own a market and you dominate that completely, if illegal behavior takes place, it will take more than a fine and a cease and desist to restore competition in that market. And this is one of the things that we'll look into in the next mandate. So uh, in the US, Facebook already launched its, its news tab. And I wonder if you, what you think about traditional media partnering with Facebook now. And yeah, do you see us as competitors or as partners? I think it, it very much depends on, on the issue at stake. Um, you probably know that at the same time as I've been having a number of, of antitrust uh, uh, cases, uh, colleagues of mine have been working uh, uh, with Facebook, uh, with uh, Google, with other tech uh, of the tech giants uh, in order to try to prevent uh, legal content, to take it down as fast as possible, uh, because here... <coughs> Uh, what we saw was that it would take quite some time before you would have effective legislation to make this happen. So better to prevent illegal content from spreading by establishing a partnership. So here basically we have both roles, both as a law enforcer and as a partner to make sure that what we all agree on is illegal in the real analog world should also not take place in the digital world. Uh, when it comes to uh, news um, and uh, all that comes from that, obviously we hope that in the European markets uh, that different players will um, play by uh, the new regulation on copyright to make sure that uh, journalists, artists, songwriters, orders, all the people who create content that they get uh, proper remuneration for the work that they do and that then allows for others uh, to make a business of the ads and the data collection that comes by uh, enabling people to see the work uh, done by, for instance, journalists. Suzanne Sayers, point of view international. Um, a question, Tony Blair yesterday from the center stage said that on a ge generally speaking, um, politicians on a national level are not sufficiently catching up with technology and the possibilities and the dangers. Do you agree with that and what's your point on that? Thanks. Well, one of, one of my worries uh, is that 
we do not sufficiently see that democracy will break down if we allow that to be privatized. And if it's just your feet, and no journalist will question what you're presented for, no opponent will, will give you a different opinion, uh, no one will discuss it with you, your family or your work colleagues or anyone, it's just for you. Then democracy breaks down. Because democracy is something that takes place in, also in public space, where things can be voiced and they can be fact-checked and they can be contradicted and they can be supported. Uh, and this, I, I think, is a very important point because this is very much the nature of a number of our social media. They seem to create a community, but it's basically just with you and the provider. Uh, and, and here I... Unfortunately, think that we also need, you know, old school measures uh, like being together, coming together, recreate uh, public space uh, where you can hear things with other people. You can discuss it, contradict it, support it. Uh, and then I think we can find a much better use of social media if we kind of insist that democracy really needs to take place among people in a real community. Uh, hello, Anna from Negocios, Portugal. Um, well, uh, banks are saying that there's a huge regulatory difference between them and fintech. I would ask you if you agree with that and if you think that fintech should be uh, increasingly more scrutinized, like in the next few years. Well, first of all, I see a lot of uh, potential in fintech. Uh, new payment services that make it uh, easier and faster and uh, less painful for me to give money to my children. Uh, so I, I think a lot of things that will facilitate payments uh, as, as one aspect of, uh, of fintech. Maybe new uh, investment products allowing people to have a different relationship with smaller businesses that they invest in. I think there's a lot of good things to be said about uh, fintech. Um, when that is being said, obviously we're very well aware uh, of, of the risk of unlevel playing field because banks, they will have you know, tons of regulation, um, a lot of that coming after uh, the financial crisis because then you saw what effects bank can have on our entire economy. So we've been very well aware of that. Uh, I think it's important also for banks to integrate what comes from fintech and also for themselves to figure out, well, what, what is it to be a bank in five years or in ten years' uh, time from now? Because obviously banks, as any other sector, uh, will have to fully digitalize. Hi, Rebecca Stewart from um, Trade Magazine, The Drum. Sorry, I'm up Hi. the back here. Um, we've heard from a lot of politicians, regulators, um, so on this week. Why is it important for you to be here and speak to the businesses that fall under your jurisdiction in a more informal setting? And what kind of discussions have you been having behind the scenes? Well, I tend not to have discussions behind the scene um, because that doesn't really make sense in, uh, in what I do. Uh, for me, it makes great sense that you take the time to come here uh, because I think there's a lot of, uh, of things still to be said and to be discussed, not just among ourselves. I think among, for instance, competition law enforcers, uh, we can very fast cozy up and exchange uh, ideas and experiences as to how we get the bad guys uh, and how we support the good guys. Uh, when, when you're in a place like this, you meet all different kinds of people. You can take a walk uh, in, uh, in the different exhibition halls here and get a sense of what is moving. That is, you know, very inspirational. And, uh, and on stage, you get a, a second to none opportunity uh, to have a more sort of um, open uh, discussion about uh, ideas and reflections that is not necessarily to be hammered down in regulation but just to make sure that we keep recreating uh, a community. 
Uh, our president-elect uh, is saying in another uh, venue today that technology may be new, but our values are not. And if we want our fundamental values to travel with us uh, and to be reinterpreted when we embrace new technology, well, then we need this kind of events to be able to talk about it. Commissioner Rostager, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure.